Awaken, mortal. Surprised to be alive, are you? <laughs> you should be. Not many would survive a massive thunderstorm out at sea. You should consider yourself. What do you mortals call it? Blessed. <laughs> yes, that's the word. Blessed. Do you believe yourself blessed, mortal? You should. If it weren't for I, Tethystia, goddess of the seas and oceans, your corpse would sink to the ocean floor, and your bones would have joined my garden. And yet here you are. Come, mortal, approach and kneel before your better. Hmm, you don't look very strong. I doubt that you're even the greatest warrior in your village, or even a warrior at all. But I never much cared for the comings and goings of my sister's children. <laughs> children. Promethea calls you such, but I know better. You're not gods. You're nothing. Slaves to our will. Promethea and the others might not admit it, but that's the truth. You mortals. So scared. So weak. So stupid. Even now, you shake before me. You aren't even looking at me. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Good. Keep your eyes on me. Now, tell me. What were you doing out at sea? Fishing. <laughs> Do you think me a fool? Promethea, the so-called goddess of wisdom, clearly. But not me. The waters you are sailing are known to house some of my various children. Monsters of great bloodthirst. No. You were planning to slay one of them. Am I correct? You... <laughs> <laughs> you must be the stupid one of your village. Look at you. You couldn't even throw a spear correctly. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I told my sister that you mortals were weak, and that you lot were better off as thralls. But no, we must set an example. And imagine my frustration when father sided with her on the subject. And then mother, and the others soon after. My brother Antigonus did lean toward my thinking a little, but he saw mortals challenging his authority on the battlefield, and I'm quoting him here, exciting. <sighs> he just wants to get off at putting even more warriors to his flaming sword. Antigonus was only ever reliable for one thing. My voice was overruled, and in my fury I went back to my ocean home, a place where no mortal can master, until the creation of the boat. I sent my grievance to mother and father, telling them that the seas and oceans were mine and mine alone. You know what they told me? They told me that I must share them. Share them? I do not share. I made it obvious not long afterwards when I sank an entire fishing village. Hundreds died. Men, women, children. I cared not for them. They were trespassers. 
My family disagreed with my actions, obviously. But they had the gall to send the one man I hated most in this world to detain me for my crimes. They sent my brother, Gaius. He marched, or should I say galloped, into this very room and demanded my cooperation. I gave him the only answer I could give. Force. That infuriating Earth God did fight valiantly, but I had the home advantage. He fled like the coward that he was, to inform the rest of my family of my choice. They would most likely see my actions as an act of rebellion. Fine, I told myself. If they expect a rebellion, I will give them a rebellion. From the dark depths of the oceans, to the coldest caves and the highest mountains, to the cruelest lands of the forests and jungles, I called upon my children. My beautiful monsters came to their mother when she needed them, when she called them, and they obeyed. That is how you mortals should be. My sky god brother, Alexandros was the first to battle my children. The faithful servant that he is, always doing what he is told. His wings were always an eyesore. Antigonus came soon after, then Promethea, then Gaius and Terra. With their combined might, they held my children, but never pushing them back. I knew that the only way to win was to take the city of the gods, or the first city, as they called it. But I could never hold it for long. I needed allies. Obviously, I would never run to the Titans. They think themselves our equals. Worse yet, our betters. Nor will I go to the Giants. For being born from earth and stone and love-throwing rocks, they are too soft and also dumb. No, there was only one I could turn to. My beloved, my king-to-be, my Persephicles. Hmm. The god of death spends most of his time down in the underworld. He rarely ever visits the first city, unless mother asks him to. But whenever he does, everyone god and goddess there keep their distance from him. And many glare at him. Son of a traitor. Son of the demon king. Son born from violation. Persephicles was seen as a symbol of shame, a disgusting creature. Mother would always give him the most attention whenever he was around. Gave him more love than any of my other siblings. She was terrible at hiding the fact. That despite how he was conceived, Persephicles was her favorite. And because of that, many of my siblings grew jealous of the affections, and father would butt heads with her. Father never loved Persephicles. Tolerated him, but never loved. Father always hated when mother would give the son of Creus more attention than the rest of her children and hated even more when I made my attempts at seducing Persephicles, no? Out of everyone, Persephicles understood the most what it feels to be distrusted, looked down on by those who claim to be your family. And I must admit, when he made you mortals, mortal, my heart beat so fast that my chest would burst. Definitely one of the best days of my life. <laughs> hmm. And I began my conquest when he became a man. He was always quiet, always keeping to himself, even when mother coddled him. Out of all of us, he looked the most like mother. His snow-white hair, his pale skin, his beauty even rivaled Aglaia's. I eventually found him alone, hiding away in Mother's lunar garden, under his favorite tree. I made sure to dress for the occasion, 
Made sure to show off what's needed without walking around practically naked like Glea usually does. It was easier than I thought when I approached him. And just a simple caress on the cheek, kiss on the lips, and the promise to love him for all time. I do, of course, sometimes make promises that I never intend to keep. But with him, I was sincere. I loved that man. And I knew from that moment in the Lunar Garden that he loved me. We loved each other under that tree. And we loved, and we loved, and we loved. Throughout the whole night, I showed him what it means to love. To truly love. From that day forward, we were together. I didn't care what the immortal community thought of our relationship. He was mine, and I was his. Of course, I did most of the flirting. He was too shy for that. <laughs> it wasn't long before I started popping his little bastards out. I had each of them raised with me down on the ocean floor, for I dreaded the thought of them in the first city's influence. <sighs> The sirens, that is what our children were called. Girls of such beauty and dread. Even now, if you listen closely, you can hear their singing. And they are loyal to me. Now, I need their father by my side. I sent our daughters to fetch him, with the promise of him ruling by my side, as my king and I, his queen. I knew once I have his undead fighting for me, the heavens and the earth would fall. I could easily tell my brothers and sisters were growing tired from the fighting, but still, they would not yield. <laughs> Fools. This was the beginning of the end. Or so I thought. From the chaos of battle, a horn was blown. A sound of ominous dread. I knew immediately that it was Persephicles. But something was wrong. The undead horde. They charge not at the heavens, but at the seas. My forces didn't stand a chance. The undead slaughtered anything that their swords and spears could reach. And from the distance, my heart dropped. There, with our daughters in chains, stood Persephicles, riding upon his black steed with his frost scythe in hand. My beloved, he turned his back on me. He sided with them. I had no choice but to surrender. My forces were scattered, and my daughters prisoners of war. As punishment, I was sentenced to remain in the seas and oceans, only to return to the city of the gods every winter. As if I actually wanted to go there. As for Persephicles, he was ordered to chain me to the very throne which I sit. And for five hundred years, I remained. That is, until I decided to return to the city once winter came. Only because I heard that Persephicles was there. He only visits the city briefly, so I had to be quick. I had to know why. I would soon forever curse that day. For what I saw was a worse betrayal than the previous. He... He took a wife. But not just any wife. He married the Titaness of Winter. Tywinette. How? Why? He was supposed to be mine. But instead, I see that... That whore... Standing beside my beloved. 
smiling up at him, his hands cupping her face, caressing her frozen cheeks. And worst of all, the whore was pregnant. I couldn't stand the sight of it any longer, and I left. How could he? How could he choose her over me? I was his, and he was mine. Why am I even telling you about this? You're nothing to me. What was that, mortal? Speak up. <laughs> you agree with me. You believe the gods are in the wrong. Foolish mortal, have you not been listening? I rebelled because I hated you. You were weak and needed to be cleansed. The weak were given too much leniency, and the strong were to be their protectors. What utter nonsense. It is the strong that rule. You still agree with me. You believe the strong should be masters, not protectors. Hmm. You must be some rare breed of mortal indeed. Fascinating. Hmm. Mortal, do you believe in destiny? Because I believe that is why you're here. You and I, we are here for a purpose. I see that now. If mortals cannot grow naturally the way I want them to, then I will make them. Yes, it is time. The mortals, since their creation, have created religions and cults, worshipping the gods of their choice. It is time for a religion of my own. My followers will sail across the seas and oceans, and they shall raid, kill, and burn in my name. And you, you will be the first. The first of my worshippers, my first prophet. How does that sound to you, mortal? <laughs> yes, you kneel well. I have much to catch up on. My family's faiths are already vast. And few have already sired several demigods to spread and fight for the faith of the gods. Hmm. Mortal. Approach. As my first prophet, I have a special task for you. Come closer. 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 Good. Was that good? Good, because for your first mission, 